Let's talk about the photographer behind these images. Hopefully I'll be able to explain to you how Todd Heido and his work will change the way you look at photography as much as it did with me. In fact, when I first looked at the work of Todd Heido, I felt what you can call two almost antagonistic motions. The first, a certain degree of curiosity or fascination, if you will, that seemed to pull me forward and forward closer to the pictures. But then it came this uneasiness, this unsettling fear that pulled me away and away. And right then and there, I knew that to me, Todd Heido was and is a genius at what he does. He is an American photographer originally from Ohio that came to prominence in the early 2000s when he released his photographs around suburban landscape. And particularly striking were his images of houses at night. These were notorious for the loneliness, mystery and fallen feeling they evoke. I can't tell you how many walks I've taken at night, just looking around me, thinking and feeling, taking on what I call this intimate distance between what I see and feel and the real reality surrounding me. And through the beauty of his images, Todd Heido made me comfortable enough to debate, if with no one else, at least with myself, on the necessity for openness in photography. In fact, this is one of the reasons his images, I believe, are so effective, so consistent. In fact, they abolish their own rigid formality to become open and inviting for me, you and everyone else. And if you think he does this only with house exteriors, he does it as well with interiors and people. His vision as a photographer is one that encompasses yours as well. After all, you are the audience. But this is nothing new. Two artists come to mind. Andrew Wyeth and Edward Hopper. The latter known for extremely famous paintings such as Nighthawks or Automat for his depictions of Cape Cod and New England. Whilst Wyeth, who described to have painted his life, focused on the landscapes and moments of his hometown of Chadsford in Pennsylvania and his summer home in Cushing, Maine. But the references don't end here. The photographs of Robert Adams and Hiroshi Sujimoto and the countless times before where filmmakers have used this uneasiness and openness to play with their audiences. In 1942, filmmaker Jacques Tourneur has us believing in the fantasy and fears of his character Irene Reed on this ancient curse that will turn her into a beast through a combination of light, shadow, loneliness and liminal spaces. In 1947, Fritz Lang heightened the hysteria and fear in us by having us following John Bennett's character through a string of empty rooms and doors to nowhere. And whilst Heido's purpose is not to scare his viewers, he does connect the dots like these filmmakers did, between a necessary openness and the exploration of liminal spaces. Liminal spaces in itself can refer to a familiar place shown in an unfamiliar context, a space that is designed for people but without a human element. But it can also mean something that is not strictly physical. A liminal space can be a metaphorical one, like a decision that involves a transitional period, 
or also emotional, like being between these two emotional forces that I described to you before. It is per se a gap. And like a documentarian, Todd Heido produces suspended photographs in this gap of time. Sort of like a limbo that he manages to capture where you're neither here nor there. And in a weird way, I think it almost subtracts the idea that someone took the photograph. The idea that there was a photographer there. These stand on their own. And the reason for this is because these are fueled by two things that us humans are inevitably drawn to. The power that resides in mystery and the fear of being alone. Orson Welles best describes my position on this, on life, if you will. We're born alone, we live alone, we die alone. Only through our love and friendship can we create the illusion for the moment that we're not alone. And I want you to let go of these words except for one, illusion. I think for me, I don't, there's nothing I specifically want to tell them. But I, there's, I guess, things that I want to suggest, mm -hmm. you know, and because um, I don't think you can, I mean, you can tell people things, but I'm not into telling people things. I'm into like, am, like making ambiguous pictures that lead people to their own conclusion about what the, co the meaning of it might be. Right. Um, and I think that that's, to me, that's more interesting because I'm not comfortable saying like my work is about, you know, A, B and C and you should think, you know, this, you know, I, I don't work that way. This is, I believe, a key word in Todd Heido's visual language, the capacity to sell you an idea of illusion where he invites you to create your own narrative and inevitably you will. You will look at these houses and wonder who lives inside. The lights are so bright and yet you can't see anyone. You'll look at his interiors and you'll wonder who left or who is moving in. Why hasn't anyone taken the phone? Why have they left the phone behind? Why does it remain there, disconnected? We can't, as humans, resist to mystery, as human nature in itself dictates that we should make sense of things, categorize them and label them even. And Todd Heido takes advantage of this. In my eyes, Heido shows me familiar places, yet through a scope of an unfamiliar context. And this is helped at times by weather, conditions, fog, snow, and even nighttime. And nighttime in particular seems to be a factor that heightens these ideas. And about that, let us not forget the words of photography master Brasset that fits here like a glove. And he said, night does not show things. It suggests them. It disturbs and surprises us with its strangeness. It liberates forces within us which are dominated by our reason during the daytime. My images were surreal simply in the sense that my vision brought out the fantastic dimension of reality. And this shows us the extraordinary capacity of photography for capturing what is not there. But of course, photography alone can't do that. We can, by exploring what lies on our hearts and minds and how these feelings and thoughts, no matter how fitted they are to the individual and his or hers unique conditions, is to some extent relatable to all others, as we all share the same nature. We're human. And like Hopper and Wyeth, Heido creates images that make you contemplate the possibilities of narrative. Who was here? Why? when and where. And slowly without realizing you immerse yourself in what you're seeing because due to the absence of answers, you're forced to create them or at the very least speculate on them. Therefore, we can say that he explores two more elements part of the human psyche, the capacity of wonder and the freedom of interpretation. The latter which will of course dictate different conditions to each and every viewer. And just like Hopper did in his paintings in the past, this evokes feelings that resonate with many people. So, ultimately, Heido changes the way you look at photography because he teaches us the importance of leaving our photography open to others, receptive to their ideas without them actually knowing. And without possibly his knowledge, his photography becomes both effective and effective. 
because it allows us to forge our own connection to his work. And if you're wanting to photograph or film something inspired by Todd Heido, let me talk to you about the lenses that I used in today's video. Suray's newest lens kit, the Nightwalker series. I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to try the three lenses, the 24, 35 and 55mm part of this kit. And all of these lenses have a maximum aperture of 1.2, which of course makes them excellent for low light shooting which is exactly what I did in this video. And so all the shots you've seen throughout the video were filmed with the Nightwalker lenses. These lenses are available for different mounts, E, X, R, F and MFT. And when we're talking about sensors, you can definitely pair these on cameras with an APS-C or S35 sensors. All the three lenses are pretty uniform, being the exact same measurements in terms of length and width, with the same 67mm filter thread, which is handy in case you need to interchange lenses and constantly carrying them around between sets. I ended up pairing my lenses with a Panasonic Lumix GH52 and the results were simply great. And I really pushed these lenses filming late at night for the most part of this video and I was truly impressed with the capacity of these lenses to retain detail and the footage, as you've seen, is all raw and barely needed any post-production adjustments as I wanted to see exactly what I had captured with these lenses. And given the amount of quality you have, these are definitely budget-friendly lenses. And having previously worked with Sure, I know they're very good in their build quality and the Nightwalker series didn't disappoint. I was super impressed with how light and portable these lenses were, as well as by the quality of their materials. So if you want to check out these lenses, links will be below, as well as links to other Sure products. And I want to thank Sure for the trust and opportunity once again to work with them. And I want to thank you for spending time with me today and getting to know the work of Todd Heido. So this has been all for today. Keep shooting, keep creating and learning about photography. And I'm out. Peace. Seen it all, you can all been a fan for I can't fall in love